So I've got what might appear to be kind of a random card on my test bench. It's not actually an EVGA 8800, it's an ASUS 8800 GTX with an EVGA Ultra cooler on it. And there's a very good reason I have this here. Now, it's been about three years since the launch of the 8800 GT. And three years is, according to NVIDIA's internal research anyway, about the average upgrade cycle time for a gamer. So I want to have a look at what gamers who bought the original DirectX 10 GPUs, so that's a full DirectX generation ago, that is the 8800 GTX, 8800 GTS, 8800 Ultra, and really the 8800 GT. They all fall into kind of a a performance range that's within about 20 to 30 percent of each other. What do they get by upgrading to what is now, by all appearances, the DirectX 11 bang for the buck GPU to have, the GTX 560 Ti. So here's another interesting point to kind of look at. The Steam Hardware Survey actually reveals that 72% of gamers are still on DirectX 10. So you can imagine that NVIDIA is really hoping that a lot of those guys who upgraded to DirectX 10, you know, two to three years ago and are getting to the end of the life cycle of their card are going to upgrade to one of these. So let's have a look at what the benefit is of upgrading to a GTX 560 Ti from an older generation card such as this one. So I'm loading my save game called Image Quality Compare, and I just want to talk a little bit about what things we are going to be observing here. So first of all, I want you guys to check out the frame rate in the top right corner. So it's up around, oh. So this is my Image Quality Compare save game. I want you to notice a few things about it. Uh, first of all, we are running on all medium details. This is with the 8800 GTX. You can see the frame rate up in the corner is around 50 frames per second now. Some people would probably argue that this is like uh, too high and the human eye can only see 30 FPS, blah, blah, blah. But uh, personally, I do find I notice a difference at higher than 50 FPS. Honestly, my ideal is around 60 plus, although 50 is very, very playable. But I will actually show you guys why. So I'm going to do still screenshots for you to compare. And you can uh, flip YouTube into 1080p to, uh, to really look at it closely. But the stuff you're going to want to focus on, actually, I'm going to go here back to the beginning, is uh, things like... Uh, anti-aliasing. So if you look closely at uh, parts of the image like the trees, you're going to notice that with the with the lower image quality settings, you're going to have more more jeggies on leaves uh, or on things like the tree trunks. You can see they're they're quite jagged, especially while you're moving. The effect is um, is very noticeable. Um, anyway, I'm going to sort of demonstrate why I don't believe that 30 FPS when you're in a still scene is enough because you check check this out okay so as soon as i do something like run around and blow up a barrel boom it dips so for me i want the frame rate to never dip below 30 fps because when there's explosions going on and you're moving fast around the map and there's lots of enemy characters being drawn, that's exactly the time when you need all of the performance that you can get. And if your frame rate dips at that critical time, you're going to miss a shot or you're going to accidentally drive off a cliff or, or what, whatever, whatever can happen while you're not able to properly see what exactly you're doing. So here you can see I'm driving and uh, oh wow, it looks like I managed to cut off the frame rate counter in the top there. Yeah, so I've got fraps running in the top corner and it's around 40 FPS. So anyway, yes, this is all medium details with the 8800 GTX. You know what? Crisis looks great. Crisis looks great on an 8800 GTX and I'm going to show you guys in a minute how much even more better it can look with a GTX 560 Ti. Okay guys, I've got my GTX 560 Ti on the test bench now. This is a 
An Intel Core i7 2600K processor overclocked to 4.7 gigahertz, so we shouldn't be seeing too much in terms of CPU bottlenecking. Now, I'm at that very same scene right when I first load my image quality compare save point, and you can see we're up around 115 frames per second now. There is no image quality difference for running at 115 frames per second versus running at 50 frames per second. Nothing, nada, not at all. Now, motion might be a little bit more fluid, especially if you're running on a 120 hertz monitor like the one I have here. Remember, anything above 60 frames per second is not going to really help you out when you're running on a 60 hertz monitor because it can only display 60 frames per second. How, uh, whereas a 120 hertz monitor is capable of more. So uh, here I'm just going to show you guys like what happens to the frame rate when we blow up a barrel. Instead of dipping down to you know the 35 to 40 range, we're dipping down to the 95 range. So you won't even feel a dip. So what do you do as soon as you start being able to run a game at insane frame rates? Well, you turn up the details. So I'm going to turn everything up to high and we're going to do our image quality comparison. I'll show you guys the screenshots at the end of the video. And we'll see, even on an old, this is an old title, old DirectX 10 title, how much of a difference a video card upgrade can make for you if you haven't done one in a few years. So I'm loading that very same save game. And one thing you guys are probably going to notice right off the bat is that up here my frame rate is a little bit lower than it was when I was running on the 8800 GTX. So the reason is that I've turned the details way, way up. And what I've also noticed about the 560 Ti is that when things get hairy, it doesn't dip down nearly to the same degree that the 8800 GTX does. So you can see that textures are much, much better. Uh, shadows are softer, a lot more dynamic, a lot more realistic looking. We've got like, you know, God rays going through the, uh, through the the light that passes through the trees, just way more processing effects. The water looks better. Um, and even when, you know, oh, I walked too close. Whoops. Okay, well, let's try that one more time. Even when I, you know, start blowing things up, explosions look more realistic, and the, the frame rate really doesn't dip down below 35 or so frames per second, which is acceptable even when the action gets intense. So I'm actually just gonna go for my little, uh, my little cruise down the road here. And I just wanna demonstrate that even when things get hairy, that my frame rate is going to stay satisfactory. Now, 35 frames per second, I would consider more than acceptable for single player, but for a multiplayer game, yeah, I would probably, I would probably compromise some of that image quality for a higher frame rate just to make sure that it's being drawn on my screen before the other guy. But in the case of single player, really eye candy is a big part of the experience. So here, let's go find some, some dudes to kill. And then uh, you guys can watch the frame rate and please don't watch my terrible gaming skills because yes, I'm playing on easy and yes, I'm still not doing that well. What are you gonna do? And now I died. So thank you for checking out my video on what kind of image quality increases you can get if you take your old DirectX 10 class video card and upgrade it to the new GTX 560 Ti with DirectX 11 and really, more than anything else, a lot more horsepower. So that's how much different it can be even with an older DirectX 10 game. Image quality screenshot comparison coming. Actually, here's one other interesting tidbit. My power consumption was only about, wow, about 5% higher at its peak with the GTX 560 versus the 8800 GTX. So that's just phenomenal. You get that much more performance, that much better image quality without any additional power budget when you upgrade to a GTX 560 Ti.